welcome back to Baird Bros. Today on the Baird Bros, we're gonna talk about Waluigi, because we talked about that last time. Ah! Roller Boy Lawn! Roller Boy's in the lawn? Apparently. My milkshake brings all the boys to the lawn. And that's like, hey man, my name's Vaughn. As a real and a slugman. Guess which one is ours? Guess which one so we're gonna catch? It's the Slugma. Slugma! Oh yeah. Huh. I'm scrolling through YouTube here. I'm not gonna scroll through YouTube. Instead, I'm going to talk about Waluigi and a funny post that I saw the other day involving Waluigi. Because someone pointed out, it's like, have you ever noticed that, uh, uh oh. Uh, oh man, hold on. I gotta find the names. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, uh. Oh, oh, never mind. I don't have to look it up. I don't have to have that in my search history. I remembered. Okay. Um. Have you ever noticed that Waluigi looks like a combination of Sporticus and Robbie Rotten from Lazy Town? Yeah, I think about it, yeah. Kinda does, He's it? got like the tall, long stature, the <laughs> color purple, the crazy mustache, a love of sports, and villainy. Someone suggested, someone's like, are you suggesting that Waluigi is the love child of Sporticus and Robbie Rotten? But no, someone else popped in and did what I agree with, and that is suggest Waluigi is their father. That Sporticus inherited his mustache and love of sports, and Robbie Rotten inherited villainy and yes. purple. That is kind of crazy. And that is my favorite thing. That is awesome. That <laughs> is hilarious to me. It's just like Robbie, Rob, Lazy Town. Lazy Town is a direct sequel to the Mario series. I'll take it as canon. <laughs> I'll take it as head cannon. I think it's hilarious. I think that's a really funny idea. No, not head cannon. I'm saying cannon. It's gonna be cannon. Oh, yeah. Cannon to the Nintendo continuity once Nintendo obtains the rights to Lazy Town. Oh, uh, you know it'll happen. Because eventually Disney will get the rights to it, and then Disney will buy Nintendo. I'm surprised Nite Disney hasn't tried to buy Nintendo yet. Well, Nintendo's a pretty well-standing company. They do have their own sports team here in the U.S. Do they really? They own a baseball team. Huh. I can't remember which team, but... Hold on. We're gonna figure this out. Swab. Which baseball team is owned by Nintendo? Yep. Here's a the set the Seattle Mariners back in 1992 became the majority owner of the Major League Baseball team. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they've been the majority owner of that team since '92, apparently. Mm -hmm. Oh, this, much own this is just called. 10 neat Mint Nintendo facts on Mashable. Um, There's our source. Go to Mashable and try to find that. Nintendo is 121 years old. I knew that one, actually. They started as a toy company. Mm -hmm. um, Making toys before they uh, started dabbling in video games. And it really was just like dabbling at first. No thanks. No thanks. Go away. I... Like, um, first and foremost, Nintendo is a toy company, and that's where the Amiibo came from. That um, Skylanders was doing really well. Oh! Nintendo used to run a love hotel. One of the many business ideas explored by the early Nintendo was a love hotel. These establishments are popular in Japan and <laughs> offer couples rooms by the hour. Nintendo invested in a love hotel in the swinging 60s, although the location and name of Nintendo's hotel seems to be seems lost to the pages of time. Lost ah. or buried. <laughs> ah! Lost quotations. Yeah. Nintendo just doesn't want you to know which love hotel it was. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We are not going where into it was. details on what that is. Um, Don't Google it either. <clears throat> Nintendo once made Lego-like bricks. Well, that makes sense. They were a toy company. Um, only one man has the right to call his sailboat Donkey Kong. What? Skip forward a few decades and Nintendo is facing more legal action. This time it's Universal Studios, which thinks Donkey Kong infringes on the King Kong trademark. Because Nintendo's first bit had just hit the states, it was a 
a uh, crucial le legal battle to win. Nintendo pulled out and out, pulled out the big guns with attorney John Kirby, who successfully argued that the King Kong plot and the characters were in were in public domain. To, to thank to thank Kirby, Nintendo bought him a sailboat and granted him exclusive worldwide rights to use the name for sailboats. Dang! Dude, 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 dude! Guess which Pokemon is? It's totally Zigzagoon. That's the shadow. Oh wow! No, it's Mystery. What? Oh. Mystery, this smells. Um. Nintendo beats Microsoft for Redmond. Redmond, Washington is the most famous the headquarters of Microsoft and Nintendo settled in Seattle suburbs before software giant before the software giant. Huh. Problem. I can't hit that without taking it out because bite is super effective and confusion is super effective. And I can't use normal type moves on a ghost type. Oh. Ah, gosh. Diddly dang. Uh, Nintendo babies. inverted the cross-shaped D-pad? The cross-shaped D-pad was invented. Oh, they invented. I thought I read that as inverted. Invented the cross-shaped D-pad. So they, they invented the D-pad. That's cool. Um, they revolutionized it? They didn't invent it. This cross-shaped D-pad was invented by Game Boy creator a long time and long time Nintendo employee Gunpei Yoko, Yokoi. Uh, it was initially designed for the handheld version of Donkey Kong, but Nintendo soon realized it could be used with console controllers too. The D-pad features featured on the NES and uh, controller pad, and the rest is history. That's cool. Nintendo of America censored everything in the 80s. Yes. Yeah. Uh, examples of overzealous changes made to the games included a classic nude statue being closed, a red cross being removed from a hospital front frontage, uh, okay, bars, Dave. bars Let's being changed to cafes, and in one bizarre example, a criminal gang smuggling a shipment of bananas rather than drugs. That's hilarious. Nintendo owns the Seattle Mariners. We just talked about that. Nintendo developed a phone in the early 2000s, uh, as well as parenting an electronic apparatus having game and telephone functions. Nintendo actively developed a mobile phone last year. Pocket Gamer revealed the surprising news. That's cool. Um, and Nintendo Dogs was inspired by a Shetland sheepdog called Piku. Uh, Nintendo Dogs could have just as easily been Nintendo Cats were it not for the Shetland sheepdog named Piku. This this is because Piku belongs to Shigeru Miyamoto, Nintendo's famous game designer. As well as the dog-themed game, Miyamoto's impressive resume includes creating some of the world's most famous video game franchises such as Mario, Donkey Kong, and The Legend of Zelda. MPV reports Miyamoto acno acknowledged his team and considered making the game about other animals. The reason it ended up being a dog game is because about four years, years ago, me and my family actually got our first dog, he said. The family's tricolored Shetland cheap dog named Piku sealed it. That's adorable! You know, there was a skin that I got for uh, Super Smash Bros. Brawl modding. Yeah? That was uh, over Link, and it was a uh, Miyamoto. It was awesome. Nice. Are we playing? We're playing Coliseum, right? Yeah, we're playing Coliseum. Alright, we're gonna look at Pokemon Coliseum facts because why not? Flip! Not towel! You're supposed to hit them, not you! She's gonna take you out! He's gonna take you out. All right. This article comes from VG Why? Tick, tick, tick. Huh. Hold on. This battle is just dragging on. We're gonna go to page 41 of the instruction booklet. Why? Because there's this thing I wanna read in here. Yes! Bop. What the heck? There are some moves. Hold on, you will know one of these moves, and one of these moves you will not. There are. S this is page 41 of the Pokemon Coliseum instruction booklet. 
There are some moves such as Surf, Self Revive, and so on, which don't need to have an opponent selected. Self Revive? Self Revive is not a move. It's not a thing. I can't even think of a move that would even try to do that. No, like you cannot self revive a Pokemon. That would OP that Pokemon so hard. Heavens to Betsy Ross! Betsy Ross is a beautiful woman. Hey Daniel. What? You can't catch Kyogre or Groudon. Nope. Want to know why they're on there? Why? Because the integration with Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. It's just goofy to me. That's funny. Uh. It was their first appearance in 3D. Hmm. Pokemon Coliseum contains character models based on Pokemon Fire Red and Pokemon Leaf Green despite the GBA games being released after, uh, two months after the Pokemon Coliseum game did in Japan. The models can be seen in, a, in the game's multiplayer mode if a Fire Red or Leaf Green cartridge is registered. In, uh, in Pokemon XD you can see uh, the Emerald models. Huh. Uh, Rui, who is the uh, girl that we named Dan, or Daniel, was it Dan or Daniel? Dan. Dan. Uh, Rui in the Japanese one has a shorter skirt and a shorter shirt, but it was lengthened in the English release. Dang it, Nintendo! Just censoring things that didn't need to be censored. Covers up her belly button. Comes a little further down her thighs. We need more belly buttons. Daniel needs more belly buttons. <laughs> catch it, catch it, stupid Spider Man. Dang it. Huh. Apparently, in Pokemon Coliseum and XD, some of the Chinese were incorrect. Like, oh, uh, some of the examples oh. of it are Ludicolo, Breloom, Metagross. This is some of them. Pokemon that were wrong? The Shinies were wrong. The Shinies were wrong? Yeah, Ludicolo is supposed to be, like, a bluish color in its shiny form, right? It's supposed to have, like, blue and brown. But in, uh, in this, it's yellow. Like, completely yellow. It's a um, Breloom was supposed to have like reddish to its mushroom parts. Mm -hmm. um, instead, oh, what's the mess up on that one? Hold on. Oh, its claws. Its claws are supposed to be like yellow, and the eyes on it too, in the shiny version. But instead, they're blue in this game. Um, with Metagross. Metagross, he's supposed to be, he's supposed to have an overall he's gray and like, yellow. He's supposed to be like silver and gold. Yeah, silver and gold. Silver and gold. Like, I know that's shiny quite well because I actually have it. Silver and gold. Instead, in this one, he is like a uh, muddy red color and white. That is gross. Yeah. Let's try this. You need to be mine. Give me your Pokemon. Yeah! Huh. Apparently Mewtwo is wrong. He's got a greenish gold tail in this with blue eyes instead of the lime green tail and Let's eyes. It doesn't have a picture, this is just text. Uh, Sharpedo in this one has uh, dark pink on top and blue on blue on the bottom instead of bright pink on top. Uh, 
With white on the bottom. Dude, I think we battled everyone in the square. So. Woo! Next time we battle, we won't be in the square anymore. That'll be cool. This <laughs> is somebody just called Ludicolo the golden pineapple. <laughs> um... There we go. Oh. Excuse me. Is there a computer in here? Yes, there is. Well, anyway, thanks for watching Baird Bros. Doug Trio. Today. Oh no, the image is broken. Why? Why does the internet have to have broken images? Broken links. Thank you so much for watching Bear Brothers today. And thank you for listening to me just sit there and read lists of fun facts about Nintendo and tell you about Waluigi and just have a good time. Hopefully, one of our other games we play this week will finally be us finishing Kingdom Hearts because we've been playing it for over a year at this point. Maybe. 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 Uh, we should at least do one episode on it this week. We should. We should. All right. We'll see you next time. On Bear Brothers. Bye bye! Bye! That could be fun. And then you just say, like, what's the whole story? Woo, it's an umbrella!